Good morning, everyone. It feels like you're back to normal, right? Well, for me, I didn't take any days off, any time off, but who's counting? So, let's jump right in. We got lots of sports to talk about, as always. This is the Dave Talk Sports podcast on the Dave Talk Sports YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, as always. We got two quarterbacks to talk about and a pitcher. So it's all the the captains, the leaders, the guys with the right arm, and they're leading the squad. So let's start with Jacoby Brissett. He's the new starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts ever since Andrew Luck up and retired. You all know the story. So Br- Brissett is the starter. He's in the final, entering the finer, final year of his rookie contract until yesterday. So for some reason... I'm not sure, really. I mean, maybe the Colts are overestimating and overrating Brissett, not because of the contract, because they think he's going to be good and they want to kind of get ahead of the curve. They want to offer this, this, what for a starting quarterback is a small contract. But in terms of what Jacoby Brissett is right now, it's a lot of money. So I think that's the move that they're going for, but I'm, I don't really get it. So you're locking up Brissett for money that would be a hit on the salary cap for this year and next year with the amount of guaranteed money that they gave him. And I don't really get that because He's a guy who really needs to prove himself. And it's not like he's going to go out and give you 45 touchdowns, 50 touchdowns, 4,500 yards, and five interceptions. Like, he's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not. He's capable of being a starting quarterback, I guess, but he's a bottom third starter who could give you, I don't know, 22 touchdowns and 12 picks and complete 61% of his passes and give you 3,000, 3,500 yards, which is really not great anymore for quarterbacks in the NFL. So I don't fully understand this unless the, the Colts just trying to read the tea leaves and think Brissett's going to turn into this like really good starting quarterback and they just want to get ahead of the curve. So I, I don't know that I get it, but this is what they've done. They've locked up Brissett for at least two years. And he's their guy for now. So we'll see what happens. It's uh, it's an interesting division with all the movement with the Texans, with Luck retiring, with Foles now the guy in, in Jacksonville, and, and then the Titans is floating around who every single year they seem to be 9-7. and seven. Now they have a nice insurance policy this year, bringing in Ryan Tannehill to back up the often injured Marcus Mariota. So it's a bunch of just eight and eight teams, I think, at this point in that division. I think the Texans are going to edge everybody out at nine and seven, maybe ten and six, now that they have Laramie Tunsil in the left tackle to protect Deshaun Watson. Well, we'll see. Let's move on to the other quarterback that I want to talk about. It's not of the NFL variety. It's in the world of college football. So college football is underway. NFL getting underway in a couple days here, so we can talk about college football as well. Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts was the starter in Alabama. He had an unbelievable record. The guy had only lost two games in his career at Alabama. And they're down in the championship game, and they bring in Tua at halftime, and he brings them back, and they win, and that's basically it for Jalen Hurts as the starting quarterback. It's unfortunate. I mean, how often you a guy who has a winning percentage of like 99 or 98% or whatever, 97% or whatever it was, and then you lose your job. I mean, it's, it's pretty rare. It's almost unfair, I think people would say. But he took it in stride for, for a kid, you know, hovering around the age of 20 in his early 20s. It's really... Uh, a, a rare feat, I think, for someone of his age to show so much poise and maturity and honestly self-control and saying, okay, 
Tua's got all the talent in the world. I, I wish Tua, you know, all the luck in the world. The sky's the limit for him. He, if he stays healthy, he's probably the number one pick in the NFL draft next year. So I get it. They won a championship with the comeback. They think I'm limited. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to transfer out of town. I'm going to transfer to the Oklahoma Sooners. And I'm going to play like a bat out of hell who's got everything in the world to prove. And I'm not inside his head. I don't know that's what he's going through. But he sure as hell played game number one, week number one like that. This man combined for seemingly 17 touchdowns and 1,800 yards in one game. I mean, he was by far the player of the week across college football, and it wasn't even that close. So I'm going to post a link to his game stats and the, the box score to that game You know, on Twitter when I get home. Uh, you can follow me at Dave Ettinger, too. He was absolutely unbelievable. So I wish him the best of luck. Now, I don't know that he's going to win the Heisman and, and be the best player in college football all year, but it was a hell of a statement after getting essentially shipped out of town. I mean, because if he's in the NFL, he's getting traded. But instead, it's college, and he was able to transfer out. Then he was able to find himself, luckily, a, a starting job somewhere else, right? Now... A guy who did get traded a couple years ago and has had a, a, a not complete resurgence because he's never really been bad. I think he's had one bad season in his whole career is one Justin Verlander. Justin Verlander, all right, well, escapades on the road as I'm getting uh, essentially run off the road by a truck and then I, I got Uber drivers who don't want to let me in. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm coming in whether you like it or not. Okay, pal, this is my lane too. Yeah, this is the Dave Talk Sports Podcast, episode number 50. We should have a celebration. It's like a monumental occasion. We're having fun here on the Dave Talk Sports Podcast. I hope you are, too. You join me on my ride home from CBS Sports Radio Network every single morning as I drive from Manhattan, the radio station, and I drive on home to Long Island, where I live, and... You join me with my sports talk, my opinions, my takes, my predictions, and every once in a while we get a, an imperial bag and paper company truck that tries to run me off the road from New Jersey. Thanks, pal. But we're doing all right. So Justin Verlander, if you didn't see, this is actually from two days ago, threw another no-hitter. This is his third no-hitter of his career. And he's now only one of six pitchers in Major League Baseball history to have three or more no-hitters. I won't read you the entire list, but it contains guys like Sandy Koufax, uh, Young, Bob Feller, and Nolan Ryan. So, it's a hell of a list. Justin Verlander is not 25 anymore. Justin Verlander, I believe, is 36 years old. And since being shipped to Houston and then signing a new contract to stay there has been unbelievable. Again, not a complete resurgence because he was never really bad, but leaving Detroit for Houston used to be a bad thing. Now it's a good thing. Houston just produces and helps along just aid outstanding pitching. Garrett Cole, a really good pitcher, goes to Houston, gets even better. Charlie Morton has a late, you know, a career, late career resurgence. That was a resurgence, and now is outstanding in Tampa Bay. Just everything they touch kind of turns to gold in the pitching department, and Justin Verlander is going to keep it that way. Now, this has been episode number fifty. I gotta go. I hope you guys enjoyed quarterback talk and pitcher talk. All the captains. That's all we're talking about today. So, please subscribe to the Dave Talk Sports YouTube channel below the video. And back to your regular routine you go. No more holidays for you till Thanksgiving. So, thanks for joining me. Until tomorrow, enjoy your Tuesday. See you.